Okay, question five. A student is investigating the resistance of a conducting putty. The density of the conducting putty is 5,300 kilograms per meter cubed. The student has 100 grams sample of this putty. Show that the volume V of the sample is about 1.9 times 10 to the minus 5. So we should realise then that density is defined as being the mass per unit volume. And we've got um, we're after the volume, so the volume will be the mass, something like that, the mass over the density. So in kilograms, that's going to be 0 0.100 kilograms divided by the density of 5,300. comes out as being into my calculator as 1.89 times 10 to the minus 5 meters cubed, which is about 1.9. So part B, the student rolls the putty into a cylinder shape and connects the ends of the cylinder to metal plates as shown in figure 5.1. The ohm meter is used to measure the resistance R of the conducting putty. <coughs> Excuse me. Suggest why the student uses large metal plates at the ends of the conducting putty. Um, the reason for this is so that the entire cross sectional area is in contact. Okay. Describe how the student can check that the diameter of the conducting putty is constant. What they would need to do is you would need to say, uh, using a micrometer or vernier calipers, what kind of micrometer? Uh, check. The diameter at several places. Along the length. Okay, the reason you would, uh, if you look at the mark scheme, it's saying um, at several places along the length is because we're looking to see if the uh, the diameter is constant and if you just keep repeating it at the same place you might it may not be constant at, it will, will be constant to that place but that's not across the entire length so that's what we're after with that okay uh, the student measures the resistance R of the conducting putty for different length L the volume of the conducting putty is kept constant the student's results are shown in table 5.2 and what we're going to do is complete the table for the missing L squared value. So our L value is 0.081. If I square that, my calculator says 6.561 times 10 to the minus 3. Um, hopefully you will have noticed by, via the other numbers, but up in the units section, it's all of these numbers are times 10 to the minus 3, so don't just put what's in your calculator. And you should also realise that the length is given is measured to two significant figures, so I should give my L squared to two significant figures. So that is 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 3. Each length is measured to the nearest millimetre using a ruler. Determine the percentage uncertainty in L squared for L equals 0 0.049 metres. So if we're using a ruler with a millimetre, that means our absolute uncertainty would be plus or minus 0 0.001 metres or millimetre. So we need to find out what is the absolute uncertainty as a percentage of the measurement. So 0 0.001 divided by 0 0.0 Four, nine, and multiply that by a hundred.
and that comes out as being 2.04 so let's say that that's 2% and because I'm going for L squared which means I'm feeding this uncertainty into it twice because it's L times L so I will have to uh, double the percentage uncertainty so that will be 4% Part D, figure 5.3 shows the graph of R along the y-axis against L squared on the x-axis. We've got to plot the missing data point and draw the line of straight line of best fit, which I've done. So there's my missing data point and I've put a line of best fit in. With the line of best fit I should have an equal scatter either side, so that one's on, that one's on, slightly above, slightly below marginally below and a little bit above so I would say I'd be quite happy for that and now I have to determine the gradient of the line of best fit so what I need to do is choose two points on the line and I must make sure that they're really far apart to stop anything so I will choose that point there just there and I will choose let's say yeah, that looks quite a nice little point there. Okay, now what I would do is I would say write the coordinates on. So that's 2, I'm not forgetting my power of 10 down here with, with that. So that is going to be 2.2 times 10 to the minus 3. And my y value is going to be 13 ohms. And my point over here, my x value is going to be 9.8. Again, don't forget my times 10 to the minus 3. And my y value is going to be 62 ohms. So the gradient is the difference in y over the difference in x. So the difference in y is going to be 62 minus 13 and the difference in x is going to be 9.8 minus 2.2 times 10 to the minus 3. And my gradient comes out as being 6,447, so that's going to be 6,450. I'm not going to worry about the units, although the units would be ohms per metre squared. No, that's more here. Ohms per metre squared. 6,450. Okay, the relationship between R and L is R equals rho V over L squared, where rho is the resistivity of the conducting putty and V is its volume. Use your answer to D part 2, which was the gradient of the line, which I said was 6, 4, 5, 0, ohms per meter squared, and V as 1.9 times 10 to the minus 5 meters cubed, to determine a value for rho, include an appropriate unit. Okay, well, what we need to realise with this then is we had a graph of r against l squared and we had a straight line. Not sure if it, well, yes, according to this relationship it would have gone through the origin, so let's do it correctly. Is something like that, and that's on the y axis, L squared is on the x axis, so that means that rho over v is the gradient. Okay, so therefore, rho, the resistivity, is going to be the gradient 
multiplied by the volume. So that gives me my 6450 multiplied by 1.9 times 10 to the minus 5. And that gives me a resistivity of 0 0.123 um, should go to two significant figures because my volumes are two significant figures so I would say 0 0.12 and now the unit if you don't know what it is already the gradient was ohms per meter squared so if I've got ohms per meter squared And then they're going to be multiplied by meters cubed. So this is all a bit crammed in here. Let's do it over here. Ohms per meter squared multiplied by meters cubed, and that will give me a unit of resistivity of ohm meters.